Have you ever stubbed your toe on something? Or bumped your head on a hard object? Perhaps you've had a hard landing? Or run into something or someone that hurt? If you've had any of these uncomfortable experiences, you've had a first-hand experience with matter. What exactly is matter? How can matter be measured? And how is matter described? During the next few minutes, we're going to explore these questions and others as we investigate the fascinating world of matter. Look around you. What do you see? Chances are you see furniture, walls, and other objects. All these things are made of matter. You decide. What is matter? Matter is anything that takes up space. When you take a walk outside, it's easy to recognize different types of matter. You may see plants, animals, and other things. But what about the different types of matter you can't see? For example, we can't see the air around us, but it does have matter. How do we describe the different types of matter, and how do we differentiate between them? For example, is all air the same? Or are these trees the same? In order for us to distinguish and describe different types of matter, we must know something about the characteristics of matter. Matter, such as that in this pencil eraser, is made up of tiny particles we can't see. These particles are in constant motion. Particles in other types of matter, such as dirt or ice cream, vary in shape, size, motion, and in the way they're arranged. These factors affect the properties of matter. What is a property? A property describes the characteristics of matter. You describe it. What would you say are the characteristics or properties of this tennis ball? This tennis ball is green. It has a round shape and has a fuzzy texture. Color, shape, and texture are common physical properties used to describe matter. A physical property is a characteristic of matter that is observed without a change in the substance. These apples, for example, have a round shape, are red and green, and feel smooth. Size is another physical property. For example, you describe horses as large animals, and spiders as relatively small animals. Many metals, such as silver and gold, have a shiny appearance called luster. Other types of matter such as the iron in paper clips, has a property that is attracted to magnets. And some matter, such as the metal in this switch, has conductivity, which means electricity can easily pass through it. Beyond physical properties, matter has certain chemical properties. A chemical property describes how a substance changes into a new substance. For example, the metal iron has the ability to rust. Wood has a chemical property called flammability, which means it can burn. These are just a sampling of some of the many properties of matter. Let's now take a look at some of the ways you can measure those properties. If you wanted to buy a certain amount of gasoline, you'd need to watch the pump closely as it was measured. And if you wanted to buy a board that was a certain length at a lumber yard, you'd need to measure it with a tape measure. As you can see, we measure matter all the time. What is measurement? 
Measurement is the process of explaining the characteristics of matter with numbers. Tools frequently used to measure matter include scales, measuring tapes, measuring cups, and rulers. Let's take a closer look at the process of measurement. These skiers are on a ski course that is about 8 kilometers in length. These trees have a height of about 20 meters. And this leaf has a width of about 13 centimeters. Height and width are measurements of length. In the metric system, the basic unit of length is a meter. And in the English system, it's the foot. Scientists such as these fisheries biologists use common tools such as rulers and meter sticks to measure the length of fish. You compute. What's the length of this skull in centimeters? This metric ruler tells us the skull is 11 and 1 half centimeters long. Next time you measure something, try measuring it in metric units. You compare. What will be more difficult, pushing this wheelbarrow that's full of stones or pushing an empty wheelbarrow? Of course, the wheelbarrow full of stones will be more difficult to push. This is because it contains more mass. Mass is the amount of matter in an object. This mountain contains mass, as do these snowmobiles flying through the air. The mass of a given object stays constant, while its weight can vary depending on certain conditions. The pull of gravity on an object determines its weight. Gravity is the force that pulls objects, such as this skier, toward Earth. It's also the force that keeps Earth in orbit around the Sun. This car on Earth has a certain weight, but on the Moon it would weigh less. This is because the force of gravity on the Moon is much less than the force of gravity on Earth. In fact, on the Moon, the car would weigh only about one-sixth of its weight on Earth. But even though the car weighs less on the Moon, its mass is the same as it was on Earth its mass did not change. Remember that weight is the measure of the force of gravity on an object and mass is the amount of matter in an object. Mass is measured in metric units of grams or kilograms. The mass of this coin, for instance, is about 5 grams. This stack of paper has a mass of about one kilogram. Scientists measure weight in units called newtons. A newton is the amount of force needed to cause an object with a mass of one gram to accelerate at a speed of one meter per second for each second of motion. When you step on a scale, you don't read your weight in newtons. You read it in pounds or kilograms. For everyday simplicity, we discuss the weight of objects without changing mass to newtons. This tool, called a balance, is a device used to measure the weight of objects. And this electronic scale is used to measure the weight of boxes in this warehouse. Have you ever bought a one liter bottle of water? or used a measuring spoon while cooking. These are just a couple of examples of how volume can be measured. Volume is the amount of space something takes up. The basic unit of volume in the metric system is the liter. If you are cooking in a country that uses the metric system, you'd measure smaller amounts of volume in units called milliliters and larger amounts of liquids in liters.
This measuring cup contains 250 milliliters of noodles. There are 1,000 milliliters in a liter. In science, a graduated cylinder is often used to measure the volume of liquids. This graduated cylinder contains 7 milliliters of liquid. Beakers are also often used to measure liquid. The volume of solids can be measured in a couple of different ways. The volume of solids that have a regular square or rectangular shape can be easily calculated using a metric ruler. By measuring the length, height, and width, and then multiplying all three, the volume can be computed. The volume of solids is commonly expressed in cubic centimeters or cubic meters. With smaller, irregularly shaped solids, such as this rock, it's possible to calculate volume using a process called water displacement. One way this can be done is by filling a graduated cylinder with water to a certain point, such as 50 milliliters, then placing the object in the water. See how the level rises to 60 milliliters. You compute. What's the volume of the rock? The volume is computed by subtracting 50 milliliters from 60 milliliters to get a volume of 10 milliliters. 10 milliliters of water is equivalent to 10 cubic centimeters, making the volume of the rock 10 cubic centimeters. You decide. What weighs more, 100 grams of rock or 100 grams of foam? The answer is neither. They both weigh the same, 100 grams. Even though they both weigh the same, you would much rather have the foam fall on your foot than the rock. Why? The answer lies in something called density. Density is the amount of mass per unit of volume. The foam has less density than the rock. Let's compare the two. The mathematical formula for density is density equals mass divided by volume. We already know that the mass of the foam is 100 grams. The foam occupies a volume of 3,300 cubic centimeters. We divide 100 grams by 3,300 cubic centimeters to get a density of 0 0.03 grams per cubic centimeter. The rock also has a mass of 100 grams and a volume of 50 cubic centimeters. When we divide 100 grams by 50 cubic centimeters, we get a density of 2 grams per cubic centimeter, a much higher density than the foam. The density of water is 1 gram per cubic centimeter. Things that have a density of greater than 1 sink, and those that have a density of less than 1 float. During the past few minutes, we've explored many of the interesting characteristics of matter, including the fact that matter is made up of tiny moving particles. We explored some of the physical properties of matter, including shape, size, color, texture, and magnetism. We also discussed how matter also has certain chemical properties. The importance of measuring matter was explored while specifically discussing how length can be measured. Mass and weight were compared, and the process of weighing matter was demonstrated. The concept of volume was explored, and some techniques of measuring volume were discussed. Finally, the density of different objects was discussed, and the formula for computing density was demonstrated. So, the next time you observe some of the characteristics of matter, measure some matter, 
or compare the density of different objects. Think about some of the things we've discussed during the past few minutes. You just might look at matter a little differently. Fill in the correct word to complete the sentence. Good luck, and let's get started. Number one, A, describes the characteristics of matter. Number two, flammability is an example of a property. Number three, some metals have a shiny Number four, the is the basic unit of metric length. Number five, is the amount of matter in an object. Number six, the pull of determines an object's weight. Number seven, is the amount of space something takes up. Number eight, the volume of liquids is measured in number nine, is the amount of mass per unit of volume. And number 10, this rock is dense than foam.